37 year old bodybuilder on a lot of steroids. He was probably about 5'9", about 260 pounds, and he was in atrial fibrillation. So he popped an eighth. He had chest pain, and he his girlfriend made him call 911, and he was transported to the ER. You know, they're asking him, so what are you on? What medical problems do you have? What drugs are you taking? And he was telling them, he was, you know, I'm on testosterone, I'm on a gram a week, I'm on decadrabone, I'm on anadrol, I'm on these medicines, and I took a lot of Red Bull and Viagra. I'm an internal medicine doctor, also known as the anabolic doc. Came into this world about 20 years ago as I myself was on steroids and androgens as a young guy, then went to medical school really to kind of figure things out, probably for myself, and realized that there was a disparity of care from the traditional medical uh, sense of real physicians, endocrinology doctors, primary care doctors, taking care of men that are on androgens. This goes, this goes back about 20 years. You know, then I then from there kind of ran this world of not hiding out from the feds or the state, you know, but just kind of working around it. But then meanwhile, I'm writing for magazines. I'm on steroids myself doing things that, you know, that certainly not necessarily that I'm proud of, but I did. But I was a young guy and I did androgens and it affected me. But I was a physician the whole time as I was doing it. And I developed protocols uh, of how to take care of men that are on androgens. And I started off. Really in 2003, when I was a second year resident, internal medicine, I wanted to be a cardiology doctor. And I was in the ER, my second year residency in Hartford, Connecticut, you know, working the 24, 30 hour shifts in the ER, taking people in, putting them in the hospital bed, in the ICU and working around the clock. And there was a guy uh, that, was, uh, that came in, in a 37 year old bodybuilder on a lot of steroids. He was probably about 5'9" about 260 pounds and he was in atrial fibrillation. I don't know if you guys know what that is, AFib. So he popped in AFib, otherwise a healthy man. He was he had chest pain and he his girlfriend made him call 911 and he was transported to the ER, level one trauma center in Hartford, Connecticut. And my he was taking it and they were triaging him and deciding if he had a cardiac event going on and they determined he didn't. He was just in AFib and he was stable, but now what do they do for him? You know, they're going to break the AFib and start the, you know, the medications and just monitor him and make a decision if they're going to keep him in the hospital. So as, as my colleagues are going through his history, you know, they're asking him, so what are you on? What medical problems do you have? What drugs are you taking? And he was telling them, you know, he was actually adamant. He was, you know, I'm on testosterone. I'm on a gram a week. I'm on decadrabone. I'm on anadrol. And I'm on these medicines. And I took a lot of Red Bull and Viagra. And that's the truth. That's what he took. And the physicians certainly understand Viagra, right, Sedenoville, and they understand Red Bull. This is 20 years ago, 2003. It probably was just, probably just came out right around then. And, but they didn't understand the steroids. They, they, these are physicians in, from New York to Boston, right? I don't want to be arrogant, but <laughs> probably some of the smartest doctors in the world, right? New York City and Harvard and Yale and my place, University of Connecticut, which I'm still on staff at, believe it or not, the anabolic doc. And, uh, but they, so I'm upstairs in, in, in either the call room or on the floor in the ICU because you go, what you used to do, and it's kind of changed today, you work about 24 to 30 hour shifts every three days when you're an internal medicine or a surgical resident, and you just take care of, you take up residency in the hospital. That's where it comes from. Back in the 1920s and 30s and 40s, that's how doctors are trained after medical school. So they paged me. Yeah, and you, well, you have all these pagers on back in the day. I don't know if they do. I don't think they still do that but inside the hospital. So they page me, and I'm like, guys, why, why are they paging me? So I call them up. What's going on down there? Oh, boy. And these are my friends. These are my colleagues. They're, they're in the ER. Like they're, and they, there's a senior guy there, and he's running. He's, he has Tom, we got, we got a guy down here. You got to come down and see. It's a, it's a, we don't know what to do. It's, it's a friend of yours. And I go, it's a friend of mine's down there? Yeah, he's a steroid guy. I was like, is, is that automatically a friend of mine? So he's like, Tom, we don't know what to do. This guy's on a bunch of medications. We don't know what they are. These are the smartest doctors, Harvard, Yale, University of Connecticut. They don't know what decadorablin is. They don't know Anovar. They don't know the drugs. And the guy's terrified. The patient's terrified. So I go, I'm coming down, guys. This is, again, 20 years ago. So meanwhile, I'm on steroids, and I'm, but I'm in one of the best medical programs in the country, but I'm on steroids, and I'm, of course, lying about it, and not that anyone's asking. So I go down to the ER, and I pull the, sha I pull the drape. Boom, there he is. That was it. I became the anabolic doc. I didn't buy the dot-com for probably about five years later, but I didn't realize that that was the time 
So I met him and he held on to my hand and he was crying. I mean, he wouldn't let me go. I mean, because I was about 210 pounds. I'm 195 now. And so he just saw my arm. He just saw that I was a brother from another mother. I mean, he just saw that I was, he was just, but you're a doctor, you know? So he just held me. And that night, you know, we, we, I was like, guys, I mean, come on, guys. I mean, he's got the cardizam drip on. You're breaking the AFib. Let's just work him up tonight. So we stabilized him. He didn't have any coronary disease, fortunately, and everything else was stable. So we broke him the AFib with the cardizam. We did get a cardiac MRI. We did a whole workup. And I presented him in front of about, about 100 physicians on morning report the next morning. So if, if you're in America, even in Europe and in the civilized world, right, with universities, the next morning, the, the physicians will present overnight the cases that come in. And hopefully it's not pneumonia or a DVT or, you know, it's going to be something cool, right? Because so you're, you're, when you do it in front of other doctors, you're, you're stumping people and you're calling on people. Hey, what is it? You're pimping people out, right? This is how it used to, and how it used to, that's how you learn, right? And you're exhausted and you smell. And so I, they're like, Tom, you got to present there. You got to present this guy. So I present the case and, you know, you're, you're, you're allowed to call. You, you can't call on the chiefs, you know, it's political correctness. You can't like make the chief look bad. So you call on all the med, anyone who's like equal or lower, you call, you can, so when I was presenting the case, you know, you do the past medical history, psychosocial history, you present a real case, the medicines and all this stuff. And then what will you, what you do? So I got to the medical part and I was like, all right, so this guy's on Red Bull. He's on Viagra. He's on a gram of testosterone, decadurabolin, Anovar, I forgot, Equipoise, you know, the different drugs. And that's when you start seeing the doctor. Now, again, these are the smartest people, irritatingly smart, right? These are like photograph memory people, not the nicest people in the world sometimes. They're doctors, and they're very arrogant and competitive, where I come from. So, and so you want to bust them. So it's like, all right, anyone know? I probably had it on the board. Anyone know what Dr. Durablin is? One hand went up. It was, a, it, was a, it was a woman, it was a young woman. We have a lot of people from India, right? That are coming to our medical program, kind of a brain drain, right? We take the smartest people from that country. A lot of them stay, some go back. So Decadurabla, and she's just spewing on, she knew what Decadurabla was. So I called her up and we presented the case, you know, that what happened and how he went into AFib, which probably had nothing to do with the steroids. It was more, more the Viagra and the Red Bull. You know, he just popped an AFib and he was okay. So, but after that time, he became my patient because we have continuity clinics. He became my patient for another two, uh, couple of years. And I took care of him on steroids where I tried to get him off steroids and just put him on testosterone. That just, just 20 years ago where the endocrinology doctors were against this. They're against testosterone. I mean, you could have low testosterone even today and they won't even treat you. So I proceeded from that point, you know, to become a primary care doctor, internal medicine doctor. I didn't want to be a cardiologist. That's how I became the anabolic doc. And I took some risks, you know. So I took care of men on steroids and it, it was an underground. And it's amazing brotherhood that I used to, I wrote for, for muscle and muscular development, right? And Dr. Tui Todos, now he's writing for the magazine. I stepped out of the magazine. There's some physicians in the world that are, that were, are brotherhood and were working. But 20 years ago, I could tell you that they investigate. The state of Connecticut, Department of Public Health, investigated me for five years. They weren't sure if I was doing something wrong. And I got out, you know, I, I was protected. And But some of the doctors that they had that were, the, the Department of Public Health, they're not doctors, they're administrators, they're regulators. Maybe the chief could be a doctor or a nurse. In this case, it was just regulators. So the attorneys don't know what to do, the regulator. So they hire doctors to, to ask to investigate you. It doesn't happen overnight. You're under investigation. So that was painful. I actually had some severe depression over those many years, but I kept seeing men on steroids because I felt that I'm going to be exonerated. These guys are taking steroids. They're hurting themselves. They're shutting down their testicles and I have to help them. So I did make it. I did make it. And, but as I did it, I had to keep my mouth shut. My attorney is like, there's no more anabolic doc online. You're not bench pressing online. You're not flexing. You're not going anywhere. So that was five years. And then I was exonerated because they had nothing on me. But it was a scary time. So I, I guess I've, I've kind of bought and paid for the anabolic doc. <laughs> you know, so now I spend my days taking care mainly of men that are on androgens to make sure they stay healthy. And it's, it's not endocrinology and it's not anti-aging. 
You want to anti-age? Don't have a heart attack and wear seatbelts and check for colon and breast cancer. That's anti-aging. But if you're on androgens, it's really, you have to have an internal medicine doctor. So I'm going to run through the history of androgens. This is one of my things I just put together, and I think I'm going to do it for you guys real quick. But my day is really, I can't take any new patients because I maxed out, and that was a great thing, and I'm humble for that, and I love my patients. And I had to say goodbye to women I take care of because I was a primary care doctor. And the steroid guys were just on the side, you know, in the, that 20-year period. And then five years ago, I, I decided to go after that and have patients all over the world. And then telemedicine just made it bigger because you don't have to come see me in Florida or Connecticut, but it has to be appropriate. You need to freaking know your heart, your A, B, C. So that's what I've done, guys. That, that's what I've done. And now, um, and I, I have studies, right? My wife told me years ago, 10 years ago, she's my nurse, my wife. She said, you know, you're never going to get respect by the traditional medical community unless you do research. So I do some research, peer-reviewed research stuff too. You know, and that was hard to get through to the endocrinology department at Wake Forest or University of Connecticut. But I did. And I work with the Harvard guys. You know, they're, they're there. Of course, there's some arrogance, right? Because they kind of want to take control of it. And I don't take money from industry. <laughs> so you'll see there's, there's no conflicts. I don't take any money from them, right? So I do everything on my own. So oh, that's my speech, guys. We've barely scratched the surface today. For more insight into hormonal health, why not explore our channel? We've got a wealth of content awaiting your attention, and you can also visit our website at balancemyhormones.co.uk. So this is Mike from Balance My Hormones, your beacon in the fascinating world of hormonal health. And until next time, remember, knowledge is power, and your journey to wellness starts here with Balance My Hormones. Thank <laughs> you.